بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ وسرات وسلام علی خاتم الانبیاء رب شرح علی صدری و یسر علی امری بہ الوقتم السان یفا قولی وی آر ان دا منتھ آف رمضان اینڈ دس منتھ برنگس سو مینی ڈائمینشنز وچ آر ناٹ ایزی ٹو کور یٹ وی آر ٹرائنگ ایٹ آور لیول بیسٹ ٹو لک ان ٹو اونلی سم ڈائمینشنز آف رمضان وی ٹاکڈ ارلیئر اباؤٹ رمضان اینڈ دا قرآن ان سیم کنٹینویشن دس مارننگ ویل ٹرائی ٹو لک ان ٹو سم ادر امپورٹنٹ ایسپیکٹس فرسٹ تھنگ دیٹ کمس ٹو مائی مائنڈ از دا قرآن ٹاکس اباؤٹ اٹس کانٹینٹ اٹس میسیج ایز اے کائنڈ آف میڈیسن فار دا کیور آف ہارٹس ڈز اٹ مین فزیکل کیور آف ہارٹس ڈز اٹ مین اسپریچول اپلفمنٹ ڈز اٹ مین allegorically some kind of emphasis or what if we look into quran in very simple terms it tells us that human decision making is based on a complex process in which both heart and mind play their role normally we differentiate between heart as the seat of emotions and mind as seat of rationality But in the Quran, heart and mind both are used interchangeably. Therefore, somewhere else the Quran says, they have hearts but they don't use them for thinking. لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا This tafakko or deep understanding, analytical, critical approach is essentially the realm of mind. Yet the Quran has used the word qalb for that purpose. Therefore, when the Qur'an says in itself, in its message, in its teachings, there is a cure for the disease of hearts, what it tries to convey to us is, we are quite often carried away by our emotions. But those emotions have to be examined. And much before amygdala, the portion of our brain, responds to various situations there is need to channelize it through the month of ramadan this is the month in which emotions are tamed trained in a way that they do play their role because human beings or emotions become robots human beings must have emotions but these emotions have to be properly channelized and therefore the Quran provides this area of extreme importance to us. In this, what's very important for us to understand is, the words used are, O oh mankind. It's not telling us that only Muslims can benefit by fasting in the way it is prescribed. But even a non-Muslim who may like to observe these uh, conditions will experience same kind of responses in body and mind. Therefore, it begins by saying, O oh, mankind, and then tells us that this change of heart and mind is a mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all mercy, all rahm, all kindness, all compassion, therefore, whatever is uh, given in the Quran, is also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's kindness reflected in his speech. This month of Ramadan also invites us to look into the book in terms of acquiring wisdom. Hikmah or wisdom or Sophia in the uh, Western Greek thought is not something new. But Sophia or wisdom was often associated with people who had philosophical bent of mind. The Quran tells us that its teachings have such hikmah, such wisdom that anyone who looks into it is bound to benefit from it. For example, somewhere it says that don't come near prayer when you are in a state of intoxication. This is because you must know what you are saying. This ayah was qualified later on by total prohibition of alcohol. But let's try to get to the wisdom. Why the Quran says, don't consume alcohol? 
it also tells us that if you consume there is every possibility that at a smaller level or at a larger level you may not be able to make a sound judgment to let rationality prevail to let people have reason judgment it tells us alcoholism should be condemned and it should be declared totally haram or prohibited for the whole of mankind this hikma is based on understanding of human nature and only allah subhanahu wa taala who is creator of humanity who has given life to us only he can understand what things can be suitable for us for our physical appearance spiritual upliftment as well as our ethical moral and conscious behavior therefore the quran in surah luqman says they these are revelations of the wise scripture a guidance and mercy to the doers of good those who will act ethically do good deeds they are bound to imbibe these wisdom aspects and ultimately become responsible people in society and create a civil society where rationality prevails and emotions are not the basis for making judgments the quran also tells us that in this month particularly there is need to understand we are responsible human beings for that in surah al hashr the quran uses a simile and tells us that if this book which is so comprehensive which was revealed in the month of ramadan if this book was revealed on mountains mountains would shudder mountains will shake mountains will feel they are cracking because of the burden therefore this huge responsibility lies now on human beings on mankind it's mankind which shares the responsibility of living ethically and morally so the quran tells us that if it was revealed on mountains then they will burst out of feeling of responsibility what it wants to lead us to think is that even if objects like mountains will respond in that manner is humanity and particularly believers responding near us to it when they receive the quran they listen to it they appreciate its melody and recitation but are they also able to swim into its meaning are they also able to carry on their shoulders responsibility of understanding it and communicating it through their own behavior that's what is the message so the quran says in this is message for those who are used to do fikr tatafun fikr or thought or meditation or contemplation is a term which is repeated continuously in the quran in various context and this month particularly is meant for this tafakkur for this uh, contemplation for this understanding not just listening to quran but also while listening trying to think about its relevance with our contemporary situation how it can be applied how it can be conveyed how we can use it for resolving conflict and problems having said that not only for the quran but practically for most of world scriptures there is a common feeling among people that a person who has done a 7 years course in a seminary may be able to interpret what is sent in the uh, book of mark or matthew or a person who has been to a rigorous training as the rabbi can only tell us what's the meaning of certain things in torah or in mishnah or elsewhere the quran questions this aspect and says 
this book has been sent for the whole of humanity and for the whole of Muslim Ummah. There have to be people who may develop special skills, but its overall message, its guidance, its wisdom, its hikmah is not confined to a few experts. A naive person who may not even know fully grammatical structures of Arabic, but who reads the Quran with the help of English, French, German, Spanish, Portuguese or any other language translation. When he will read it and think about it, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help him in getting to the core of meaning. In doing so, if the person has hit the target, Hadith says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward him for his effort. But if for some reason he has not been able to understand properly and concludes even something which is not desired, even then Hadith says he is going to get some reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his effort. The one who is the target gets twice the reward. The one who has made effort to understand, to use his brain power, to use his wisdom and knowledge will get still one reward. This indicates how the Quran and prophetic sunnah both fight the mythology that religious texts are to be demythologized. Quite often people say Bible is to be demythologized same for Old Testament and they extend it even to the Quran. The Quran says very clearly whatever is said contains no mythology. It is something simple, something direct, something which is based on common sense, some things that is based on global ethical principles which are befitting and most suitable for mankind. Therefore, in Surah Al-Qamar, the Quran says, and we have indeed made the Quran easy to understand. But is there any that will receive an, an admonition? Which means that it has been sent structurally, linguistically, in a manner that a person who hardly knows a few words of Arabic, if he exerts, he is supposed to understand the meaning. Even those who may not have been born in an environment where Arabic is spoken and they read with the help of good translation, even they have extreme potential to understand because the book claims itself being simple. The Quran never said it is a difficult, complex, complicated or quote unquote confused statement, but it says it is bayanul linnas, it is elaborate statement for people. It has no confusion, no ambiguity, no symbolism, no mythology and therefore because of its simplicity, it has every reason to travel deep into the heart and mind and run in the blood of a believer to ensure that this person is fully observing Quranic teachings and guidance in everyday behavior. The Quran in same continuation and this month particularly calls believers, Muslims at global level to use this book for their deep understanding and critical thinking. So the Quran in Surah Muhammad says, do they not then earnestly seek to understand the Quran or are their hearts locked up by them? The interesting aspect raised here is not that people by nature have some problem. Their hearts were created to be receptive. Their minds were created to be critical. But if someone closes doors of perception, if someone blocks his thinking process, 
if someone blocks feelings in heart then no one can be responsible except that person this is simple message the quran is giving to muslims as well as to humanity it reminds me of that hadith in which someone comes and tells the prophet peace be upon him when i was not a muslim and i believed in arabian culture then a daughter was born in my family i took that daughter to an abandoned well and threw her in that and she was crying baba baba did not turn toward her and i came back when the prophet heard his tears rolled down of his eyes and prophet said if someone has hardened his heart nothing can change him this golden word explains the meaning of this ayah that if someone has blocked his doors of perception then no artificial keys can unlock it one has to think out of the box one has to develop a critical approach therefore critical thinking which has become a selling point of many management gurus is already touched in this quranic ayah the quran warns every believer to be a critical thinker using his mind and brain to open new meaning discover new areas and ultimately use the quran as uh, the methodology for development and progress in another place the quran refers to similar phenomena in a different manner here the quran complains in the day of judgment to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you sent me as guidance you sent me as elaborate message me down as something which was cure for the hearts of people you sent me down as something which had a comprehensive solution for political economic social legal international issues of mankind a book that can resolve conflicts of all nature at an ethical and legal level yet people thought is just a book of some rituals and ceremonies they even ritualized this book by way of covering up in beautiful velvet covers printing it on perfumed paper inscribing on it with golden words yet they were unable to penetrate in the meaning and look what was the message in golden words therefore the quran in the day of judgment is going to complain the messenger will say o oh my lord lo my own people took this quran of no account that they put it behind their back they left it alone and they thought it is a book that was sent for 7th century the quran came for all times to come it never claims as a product of age but it brings change in age it was not a historic text but it created a history by text and therefore the quran transcends limits of space and time on the other hand a number of people think since it came in 7th century therefore it addresses only those issues which were common at that time this is a basic misunderstanding and misperception about the quranic message the quran tells us it has universal and global meaning message for humanity and therefore when the day of judgment will come there will be uh, a complaint by the prophet and by the quran that it was left without being used properly which means to understand it which means to follow it which means to disseminate it all three aspects together the quran further reminds us that in this month and in normal life it has to be conveyed to people and uses a very interesting example 
it says even in a state of war between believers and unbelievers if there are some captives who are with you temporarily even for them you should not deprive them from listening to the quran therefore the quran says let them listen to the quran let them benefit from its wisdom so long they are with you but at the same time it says although they are in captivity you have uh, taken them as prisoners of war but you are not allowed to impose on them your faith give them full liberty let them decide for themselves if they listen to the quran and they feel that this is what they were missing this is the light they need they are welcome to become muslim but if they do not want to become muslim then the same ayah says it's your obligation to carry them back to the place of their residence in your protection which means you have to respect prisoners of war their safety their dignity their honor and you don't use compulsion in matters of faith all these aspects indicate that this month of ramadan is meant for inculcating this wider vision this unbiased approach this passionate and compassionate approach in which we are able to look to humanity interact with humanity and care to human kind the essence of the quranic teachings of moderation of understanding of trying to struggle for liberation of people from various bondages there is a question we'll take it up is uh, critical thinking or tadabbur also for possible and permissible areas uh, for each person as uh, you described uh, in the commentary of uh, 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 the term mudakkir you see uh, the quran calls itself a book which is full of wisdom and then invites people to do tadabbur tafakkur taqul shaur tafhim all these terms are used in nearly same manner which means look on things critically objectively dispassionately there are areas which the quran has defined as prescribed teachings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for example the quran prescribes a human being has innate tendency for sexuality but does that mean he becomes a sex maniac or it means he meets his sexual need through an ethical process of responsibility i understand it's not only with human beings even in animal world in birds you find that those who mate and live together do not permit others to enter that area of privacy it's not just human beings it is nature as such if something is said by the quran based on nature based on morality based on legal aspects based on communal interest then should in the name of critical thinking we challenge all these aspects and say that irrespective of harm to society harm to individual harm to legal system harm to social norms harm to ethicality we must critically examine and say let us assume this is just a statement this will be illogical and irrational therefore there are areas definitely where the quran would like us to explore say for example the quran says human life is valuable inviolable no one can be killed unless there is justification someone walks in you open your door he carries a gun in his hand he is about to shoot you should you say please kill me or you must resist when you are resisting 
then the Quran says you are fulfilling Quranic obligation of saving life and stopping a person from harming your life. Now, in such areas, can we say that let us assume this person who has come and wants to kill me had some depression or some problems and therefore let him kill me because he is carrying a gun. Therefore, when we talk about critical thinking, it has to be in a given framework. It is not a matter of critical thinking in every single area. There are areas where there is unanimity of humankind, not only our age, but throughout the ages. I have yet to find out a tribe which will say that killing indiscriminately your own people or others is something uh, allowed. No one in the history of mankind can accept it as a human approach, as a uh, legal or uh, uh, justified approach. Therefore, uh, critical thinking is required uh, in all areas in understanding why the Quran insists on hudud, why the Quran insists on certain punishments, why the Quran insists on forgiveness in many areas. All those aspects are to be cumulatively, collectively understood and only then we can say that we are correctly benefiting from the month of Ramadan. This is the month for understanding all these aspects, these dimensions of the Quran in our private reading, in collective groups who sit together and for half an hour or so share their understanding at the same time in lectures on the Quran and on Ramadan where people who have done more homework come up with their understanding. And all these invite people to think, not to accept without critical approach. Islam wants every single statement made by scholars to be critically examined and only then accepted. The criteria given by the Quran is that so long a statement agrees with the text and meaning of the Quran and with the text and meaning of Sunnah that should be accepted. Yet there can be more than one options, more than interpretations, which is again a beauty of the Quran. It allows people to interpret it differently in order to meet challenges of progress and change. If there was only one single meaning of an ayah, the Quran will become fossilized. Therefore, every single ayah has every opportunity to be understood in more than one manner which allows for progress and development needed for proper uh, living of people in societies in coming ages. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us opportunity in this month of Ramadan to think more critically, to think deeply and not only thinking but translate the Quran in our everyday behavior, in our family, in our society, in our economy, in political matters, international matters, in all walks of life and in this way save ourselves in the day of judgment to face a critical situation when the Prophet and the Quran will complain that the, the book was left behind by the followers.